Manchester United came away from Atletico Madrid with a battling one-all draw. But the fixtures only get tougher, really, in March. We've got Man City away now on Sunday. It's a game where, you know, we've we've had a couple of snatch and grab wins under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I don't really predict a snatch and grab win against City on Sunday. I don't think that's the way that Ralph Rannick is going to want to go into this game. So what I'm going to do in this video is take a look at the tactics, take a look at City's style of play, how we expect Manchester United to line up and what starting eleven we expect to see from Ralph Rannick in his first Manchester derby away from home. It's going to be a big one. You let me know what you think in the comments below, but make sure you subscribe to United People's TV, please. Come on. Come on. Go down there, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell as well. You get a ping every time I go live with a video. But let's take a look at the starting 11 that Manchester United had the last game against Watford and what City usually play with. Now, you know, you don't need me to tell you what City play with. They play with the 4-3-3. They play with Rodri. They play with De Bruyne. They play with sometimes with Gundogan there. And then they've got a wealth of talent up front. It could be Foden on the left. It could be Sterling on the left. It could be Grealish on up front. It could be uh, Silver up front, Sterling. Hell, they're a very fluid, dynamic team. Now, that 11 there, you can see, is the 11 that Manchester United had against Watford. And I don't particularly think we're going to be seeing the exact same team here against City. In terms of changes, I actually don't think we're going to see Harry Maguire come back into this team. I think it, it's something that um, Rio Ferdinand touched on in terms of Maguire's biggest weakness, which we all know is his pace and agility. Against City, that will get horribly exposed because Manchester United will probably try and play <clears throat> a bit more aggressive than we have at City for a while. I don't think we'll go completely on the front foot. I don't think we'll try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe because what Ralph Ragnick could do on paper is try to adopt his pressing style, try to adopt a style where Manchester United really try and win the ball in that area. Don't try and do that against City because we're, we're half-assed at it at the moment. When you're half-assed at the press, you're going to leave spaces. When you leave spaces, the teams are just going to play around the press. You've wasted your energy. I don't expect to see United adopt a high press. I think if we do anything inside this team against City, I think we'll probably adopt a mid press. I think we'll try and win the ball back in this area. It's, a, it's not exactly the Ralph Radnick style of play, but it's like a halfway house. And I imagine it's going to be a halfway house against City. Unfortunately for United, those three, midf those three midfielders there are probably going to be Rodri, De Bruyne and Gundogan. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Gundogan's injured or not, but that's who they played against Everton. If they play the same 11, that's who they're going to play. But I think I'm going to be sticking with Lindelof and Varane as the two centre-back options there against, against City. Let's see if Maguire comes back in, but I don't predict he will. I do predict that he will, though, bring De Low in for Wan-Bissaka. Now, that's because United are going to have to have some sort of outlook. I, I imagine we're going to be under a lot of pressure for a lot of the game. That's not imagine. We will be under a lot of pressure for a lot of the game. So we're going to need outlets. And I, I probably think that he's going to go for Delo and Shaw. That's just what my gut's telling me. You might disagree with that in the comments. And Shaw's been pretty poor for a while. But Shaw, he's got more experience in these games. I, don't, I, I can't put my finger on why I'm putting Shaw in there above Tellez. I think it's quite a 50-50 at the moment. But I'm just... It's effectively a guess, I suppose, but just some, my gut is telling me that Shaw's probably going to start this game. Maybe with a Maguire out of the team, Shaw for a little bit more experience down there. I think so, anyway. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But that's what I'm going to go as my back five. Now, this bloke's going to have to have an absolute stormer, all right? It's going to be one of those games where if United come away with any sort of positive result, De Gea has had a blinder. So come on, Dave, bring your saving gloves, my friend. But moving on to midfield, right? This... It's, it's a cliche, but in a game like this against City, it's completely and utterly true. The game will be won and lost in midfield. It's where De Bruyne exists. It's where City's heartbeat exists. It's where they're so comfortable at just passing the ball around, just maintaining possession, just slowly building pressure on, on the opposition half. And if, and if United, United allow them to do that, they'll just sweep the ball up there. They'll just keep doing that, and they'll keep possession inside that area. <coughs> And that's why this man cannot play. There's absolutely no chance that Matic has the legs to keep dealing with the sharp turns, turning left, turning right, with the ball going left to left to right. And I think even if he's 80% fit, 
I, th I think we see McTominay come back into this game, right? Even if he's 80% fit, he'll probably tell Ralph Radnick that he's 100% fit. Even if he's 70% fit, he'll tell him he's 100% fit. Scott will want to play this game. Uh, maybe that could be his downfall if he comes back into the game. He's not 100% fit and ready. But what we need inside this midfield three is energy. And that's why I would actually keep that midfield three as that. The 4-3-3, right? It's produced... It's It's been the enabler to Manchester United's most creative football under Ralph Ragnick. Because of that 4-3-3, because of McTominay operating in that role there, it's allowed Bruno and Fred or Bruno and Pogba, it's allowed the two number eights to actually act as number eights and to really create opportunities. And the fact that we got... Look, I've, I've done, <laughs> done quite a bit on this now, but 92 shots against Watford, Burnley, Southampton and Middlesbrough. Three goals, but 92 shots we've had. Creating chances has not been the problem. Finishing them has been. So I think for energy, Fred's going to be kept in that midfield there instead of Pogba, right? Now, you can argue that that's not the most creative aspect, and it, you're right, it's not. But this is also City away, and it's also a realisation. It's, um, it's not an acceptance of, of standards or blah, blah, blah. City are the best team in the league by some margin. If United are going to match up with them, we can't go there and say, no, nah, we can try and do it. We'll just get torn apart. Fred there, I think, gives United a bit more bite and we need more bite in this midfield. We need to be able to have the ball at our feet more often in this game than we do normally in games against City. Because if we just let them have the ball, we're just... You saw what happened in the old game at Old Trafford. It was 2-0, but Jesus Christ, it could have been 5 or 6. It's like they were toying with a child on the playground. That's how I would describe Manchester United's performance against City earlier this season. In a game that effectively, well, that game didn't. Confirmed Solskjaer's departure. I thought he should have been sacked after Liverpool game, but it was just another one, wasn't it? So that's the midfield three I play and the defence. So the questions here, and there's quite a few questions you can ask about this attack. Now, I actually think he's going to stick to what he did there against Watford, and I think we're going to play with Pogba down on the left-hand side. And again, I put this down to possession, and I put this down to a little bit of control. Because if, if I was expecting United simply just to hit on the counter, just to basically sit in our own half. As soon as we get the ball, look up for runners in behind, then you're going to be playing Rashford there. You're going to be playing Sancho on the right, and you're going to be playing Ronaldo up front. Because even though Ronaldo's out of form, Ronaldo is still Ronaldo. And there's absolutely no way in hell you're dropping for the City derby, right? But I don't really want, you know, I might be wrong here, okay? There is every chance that Rashford starts this game. And there's every chance that we do play on that counter-attack. We sit a little bit deeper. As soon as Fred or Bruno get the ball a little bit deeper, they look for the runs in behind. And maybe that would probably be the right thing to do, given the fact that City are probably going to play with an extremely high line. If we're being completely honest, the majority of City's... If we're looking at how City are actually going to line up, it's realistically more like that, isn't it? Right? They're going to be far more... It's going to be huge pressure on Manchester United's defence to actually stay in shape. But City, because they play with such a high line, are probably going to play like that, which means that Rashford could sit probably around about here and back himself pace-wise to get in behind. <clears throat> Sancho could back himself there and probably get in behind. So it's effectively getting the ball to Bruno in these positions here where he can then look and say, right, Rashford, you run into that space there, I'll get in the ball behind. And he goes, Sancho, you get in there and you get in the ball behind. And you know what? I think I've just convinced myself that's what we're going to do. And maybe Pogba will probably come on for Fred in about the 55th, 60th minute. Sorry, I think we will. Yeah, I've changed my mind. I was going to put Pogba out on the left wing, but the more I've just talked about it there, the more I really... City will play with that high aggressive line. We know that. We know that there will be space in behind, and we know that we've got the pace to expose it if we want to. In Rashford, in Sancho, and in Alanga. Now, you could argue here that this should be Alanga, and I think we could have an argument all day long. And in terms of form, I'm absolutely starting him there. But again, probably the reason why I'm playing Shaw there instead of Tellez, I think he played Rashford there for a little bit of experience. Rashford, remember, scored in his first Manchester derby. Rashford, remember, he might be bang out of form right now, but he has scored some massive goals for Manchester United. And he's not a terrible player. He's a player out of form completely. But does that mean I'm going to drop Ronaldo because he's out of form? Hell no, it doesn't. Uh, and I'm kind of, I know I'm being a little bit of a hypocrite because I always say play players on form. But in a derby like this and an occasion like this, sometimes a little bit of experience can go a long way. And that's probably why I'm going to start Rashford there. 
I, I'm, uh, do I want Elanga to come on in this game? You're damn right I want Elanga to come on in this game, and he will come on in this game. But if we're, th if we're thinking about how United are really going to hurt City, it's got to be those balls in behind, and it's got to be simple, square passes to Ronaldo or to the extra runner. Whoever's there, there will be square balls on. United should be able to score a sweaty goal against City if we play it properly. Right? That's the way I look at it. And of course, I'm going to be starting Jaden Sancho. Away at City, his first time returning there as a Manchester United player, having left City's academy. Hey, Sancho's come good in the last <clears throat> couple of months, hasn't he? Wasn't incredible against Watford, but uh, who was? Uh, didn't actually know he didn't even start against Watford, did he? That's probably why he wasn't incredible. But I'm excited to see Sancho in this style of play. As I said, playing on the counter-attack with Bruno looking for the balls in behind, and Bruno can find those balls in behind. Fred less so. And maybe you could play Pogba uh, instead of Fred there. So you've got two players who are really capable of looking for those balls in behind. And maybe bring Fred on for a bit more defensive security for the last 30 minutes. Maybe that makes more sense. Right? You can let me know what you think about that in the comments. But I think we're absolutely, absolutely playing with that front three. And of course, there's going to be so many eyes on this man. Cristiano Ronaldo. He's in a rut of form right now. Do I back him to return from it? Of course I do. Cristiano Ronaldo. He will return from it. But in this style of play, how will he suit? How will he suit? Because I'll be honest, it's not very pro Ronaldo this start, is it? It's playing against the team with a high line, basically looking in for the runs behind. Uh, Ronaldo, five, six years ago, you could just play, play him through there all day long. You wouldn't have to worry about Sancho or Rashford. You could just give it to Ronaldo. It's not Ronaldo anymore, is it? But if the balls go wide to Rashford, Ronaldo should be able to make runs that go right there on the edge of the box. And he should be able to get opportunities if he times his runs well. And the balls from Bruno and Fred are smart. I don't think it's going to be a pretty game. I'll be honest, I'm not looking forward to it in any way, shape or form. City, on paper, they've got our number, right? Uh, how, how Manchester United defend against City, I don't really know how we do it. I don't really know how we stop them creating opportunities. But in my opinion, I think it's quite vital that um, Lindelof and Varane start. I don't really think we can afford to play Maguire in this game. I don't think we can afford the Maguire mistake that could come in this game, that probably would come in this game because of his agility, because of his weaknesses, of his pace. City will just expose that, left, right and centre. We can't afford to have that. That's why I'm putting Varane and Lindelof in. But that's my team there. De Gea at the back with Varane, Lindelof, Delo and Shaw as the wingers, as the wingbacks, sorry, not wingbacks, fullbacks. Midfield three of McTominay, Bruno and Fred with the front three of Rashford, Sancho and Ronaldo. That leaves us Pogba and Elanga, two game changers on the bench to come on depending when we need to change that game. And as Ragnick has showed in his last few games, Ilanga against uh, Atletico Madrid and Ilanga and Fred against Leeds, the subs have been the people that have made the difference. So having Pobber and Ilanga on the bench doesn't mean they're out of the game. It means we need to bring them on at the right time. You let me know what you, you think about that formation and that starting eleven from Manchester United. I expect the high line from City. That's why I'm going for the pace of Rashford and, San and Sancho. And hopefully the attackers can find their shooting boots because we are not going to get many chances against City. If we get them, we have to take them. You let me know what you think about that, though, in the comments below. Make sure you take it easy and drop a like on the video. Come on. See you at the Derby.